Peace and blessings, guys. Peace and blessings. Mark the Messenger. We're back with another video. This one's going to be very, very edifying on how to stay on fire for God. Uh, a lot of things that I have learned, um, things that were quenching the spirit, and I'm going to go over. Now, this is going to be talking, things I'm talking about, how to stay on fire for God. I might make another video in the future of things that quench the spirit, but let's get it. Let's go, guys. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. The number one thing to do, guys, to stay on fire for God is you must be willing to deny yourself daily and to keep your eyes fixed on Jesus Christ. Okay, that's the number one thing you got to be doing. You got to be able to deny your flesh daily. What does it mean? It must be must mean living a life of obedience. Okay, you you might have to deny and forsake certain people, certain things for Christ's sake. Okay, and you got to understand that when you are doing things that are of this world. You know, uh, the Bible says a friend of the world is the enemy of, of God. Okay, so when you're doing those type of stuff, it's going to keep your flame. Your, your, your fire is going to be gone eventually. Okay, so you got to understand that it's all about denying yourself daily, picking up your cross, and keeping your eyes fixed on Jesus. That's the number one thing, guys, is stay on fire for God. Okay, now it's easier said than done because our flesh always wants to go against God, always wants to sin. Always wants to do things that, you know, go against God. But when you stay in the spirit and you stay fired up, it's a lot easier because your spirit is fighting against your flesh. When the more you feed your spirit, okay, the more you feed your spirit, it's going to fight against your flesh. The more you feed your flesh, it's going to be, now your uh, your flesh is going to be raging war against your spirit. That's in Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 to 17. I'll leave a verse right here. And with that being said, number two is don't live a life of willful sin. Okay, when you live a life of willful sin, guys, and now, of course, guys, the Bible says that if any man says he's without sin, he's a liar and the truth is not in him. So, yes, we sin uh, unknowingly throughout the day, which is why we must live a life of repentance, repenting daily. But when you when you live a life of willful sin, when you when you don't want to correct your mistakes, you don't want to acknowledge your faults. That's very dangerous. And what that could do, guys, it could get your fire. You, you no longer the fires would be burning. Okay, you no longer be filled with the spirit because you're not quenching the spirit through living a life of willful sin, disobedience. And one thing about God is very merciful, very he has a lot of grace for us, right? But if you keep if you if you keep on not hearkening to the voice of the Lord and keep going against him, you know, now it could lead to um spiritual death. It could lead to, you know, depression, sadness, a whole bunch of opening doors for demonic spirits in your life. Because, you know, you went against God. Now you're opening doors, whatever sin that you might be committing. And that's keeping you low. Okay. It's not keeping you, you know, on fire. So always understand that, guys. You don't want to live a life of willful sin. Yes, we make, we sin, we make mistakes. But you don't want to do it willfully. Okay. And repentance is not a thing, guys. When you repent, okay, God, forgive me. And the next day you're doing it again. God, forgive me. The next day you do it again. You don't want to do that. When you repent, that's something that it should be, okay, God, you know, like I don't have the intention to do this no more. That's true repentance, okay? And the Bible says you can't serve two masters, okay? You'll either love the one, love one or hate the other. So you must love living for the spirit. You must be, you know, living to, you know, fill your spirit up. Because if you're living for the flesh, you can't serve two masters. So you got to either, you got to be all in. Pretty much you got to be all in. You can't be lukewarm. Number three is to meditate on God's word and his promises every day. Yes, yes, guys. Every single day you want to be meditating on God's word. There's a verse in Psalms chapter one, verse one to three. I'll leave a verse right here. Talks about blesses a man uh, who meditates on God's laws. Um, he shall be planted in, the, in like the, the sea, the river. I don't know the whole entire verse. I'll leave a verse right here. And this is something that is very important. The reason why meditating is very important. Now, when people hear meditation, they think of new age, stuff like that. And yeah, there is some new age practices when they can meditate. But when you meditate on God's word, it keeps your mind centered on him. Okay. That's the whole reason of meditating. It keeps your eyes, on, eyes fixed on Jesus Christ and on God. Okay, this is the whole purpose of meditating. Okay, you don't meditate on wanting to make some, um, you know, material worldly things. Okay, you want to be meditating on God's promises, of God's word, because when you do that, it's going to give you a sense of peace. Okay, a lot of people who guys, a lot of people who struggle with anxiety, depression, if they were meditating on God's word, okay, I'm telling you guys. Now I'm, I'm not a doctor or something like that, but. There was a lot of times, guys, when I was when I was facing those things, and I, I didn't even know what God's word was. I was reading my Bible. Okay, so that's very important to be doing, guys. Meditating on God's word and his promises every day, okay? It could be you in the shower for literally, you know, you're scraping yourself off. You just woke up, you're brushing your teeth, and you got Psalms 37, verse 17. Or you got, like, Mark chapter 3, verse 20. 
Can you have like, you know, random verses throughout your head and you're literally just, you know, having it as a reminder. That could be a simple form of meditation. So it doesn't have to be three hours long, six hours long. When I say every day, it doesn't have to be like hours long. It could literally be for a couple minutes, a couple seconds. Okay. Now, if you want to go as long as you want, hey, more power to you. Okay, number four is you must abide in charity, faith, and hope. But the greatest is love. Okay, that's in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13. What is charity? Charity is love, okay? Charity covers a multitude of sins. Like I said, guys, on this walk, you're always going to be making mistakes. So you want to have charity for your brother, charity for your neighbor, love for your brother, love for your sister, love for your neighbor. If you see, if you see someone else, like in the streets, in need, uh, money, clothes, whatever the case may be, have a, have a, you know, a cheerful, giving heart to help that person out, okay? Also, you want to have faith, faith in God, faith in Christ, and hope. A lot of times we get hopeless, and, you know, that could open up doors, to, you know, doing things that, you know, to things that we do to, to run away from the pain. OK, so having hope and, you know, believing in the promises of God, you know, just having, you know, having hope. So all these three things, guys, is going to keep that fire burning. OK, number five is take some time to practice fasting, uh, whether it's 24 hours or more and prayer. OK, you want to get. This goes hand in hand, you know, perfectly fine. Now, you don't want to, you don't have to be fasting every single day. Uh, if you're a beginner, if you haven't fasted before, I probably said like once a week. Um, now, once again, I'm not a doctor. I know some people take medicine. Some people can't fast. But uh, if you are in good health, I would definitely recommend fasting for 24 hours. What is fasting? It's pretty much just you just drinking water and no food, no um, soda, no Gatorade, literally just water 24 hours. And what that does, it feeds your spirit, like I said earlier that the more you feed your spirit, the stronger your spirit will be to help fight against your flesh, okay? If any of you guys struggle with any demonic strongholds, any demonic spirits, uh, unclean spirits, uh, anything that's keeping you in bondage to sin, I highly recommend, guys, prayer and fasting, okay? Like I said, I know not everyone can fast, but if you can, I definitely highly recommend it. And uh, prayer, a uh, good prayer, guys, is Matthew chapter six, verse nine to 13, okay? That's what Jesus says. Uh, how to pray my marker randomly just ran out but uh yeah matthew chapter 6 verse 9 to 13 jesus tells you how to pray and uh so if you guys don't know how any uh how to pray that's the instruction that jesus talks about all right so number six <clears throat> is to be humble and don't think you are better than anyone a lot of the times we gain knowledge and we start to think that we're better than other people and that's where a lot of people go wrong, okay? Always understand that we all fall short of glory of God. The Bible says there's no man that does good, uh, you know? So you always want to stay humble. And the Bible says that in James chapter 4, verse 6, that God resists the proud, but he gives grace unto the humble, okay? We, we, we need, in this walk, we need grace. We need grace. We need mercy. Uh, we need God to forgive us. So if, we, if we're requiring that from God, God's will require that from us. We must forgive those people who hurt us, betray us, who be who are being used by the enemy to uh, you know slander us, lie on our name. Okay, we must uh, forgive those who um, you know those who trespass against us. Okay, you know we must be merciful to those. Uh, we must be merciful to those just as God's merciful to us. Okay, so we want to. If you want God to be merciful to you, make make sure you're being merciful to others. If you want God to forgive you. Make sure you forgive others. And yes, guys, I understand some people, they don't deserve to be forgiven. But at the same time, you got to understand it could, it could release a, the grudge in your heart. OK, so just forgive, even though they, you know, they don't even forgive you, even though there's something they cause in their life. Just forgive and keep it pushing, keep it moving. Because okay? sometimes that can stop you from growing in life by having a grudge in your heart. All right. Number number seven is to do the will of God, faith and works. OK, and a lot of people say that works is like. Oh, Mark, you preach the works doctrine, but guys, fasting, prayer, okay, denying yourself daily, uh, not living a life of willful sin, repenting, repent daily, okay, meditating on God's word, okay, all that is works, okay. Now, of course, does that does that uh, now repenting? We must repent for sure, okay. But like, let's say meditating, that's not gonna lead, you know you don't have to do this for salvation, but repentance is required for salvation. Denying yourself daily and picking up your cross. Okay. Uh, so all this, guys, if you apply this to your life, now that's faith. You have faith, you have faith, and you know that's gonna, you know, give you to blessings to get you to the next level in life spiritually. Okay. And that comes with works. Okay. The Bible even says that Jesus, when he comes back, he's gonna give all man according to his works. Okay. What were you doing to help God's sheep? What were you doing for the kingdom of God? 
He's going to come back to give everyone according to their works. Okay, so best believe it. Your faith and works go hand in hand. Even the Bible says that um, if, um, faith without works is dead. Okay, and like I said, guys, all this all is all works. Okay, all works, and that's all through your faith. It's fasting is, is, is faith. Okay, you believe that you're going to be delivered from a certain sin, a certain battle. You believe that your spirit is going to be filled, and it will. It will. Okay, uh, number eight is to have fellowship with the brothers and sisters in Christ. Okay, it's important to have, and now it doesn't have to be in a church building because the Bible says when two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. So it can literally, you be on the streets, uh, anywhere. We are the church. A lot of people get this misconstruction that the church is a building, okay? The church is a temple. God dwells within us. So we are the church. Everywhere we go out, when we're giving to the homeless, that's church. When we're minister, ministering to the, on this video, this is church, <laughs> So don't don't just think that church is just a building, okay? Now, like I said, guys, fellowship it could be literally be you um, texting, texting, um, calling someone. That could be a form of fellowship. You know, I have a Discord server, and we have prayer. Um, we have almost like every single day we have Bible studies, prayer, um, uh, pray, praying for people, stuff like that in private. Um, I'll leave that link in the description below. It has over two thousand people on there. It's one hundred percent free. There's no no pain, nothing like that, and that's a form of fellowship. So. Yeah, you know, any type of fellowship, guys, is required. Even this YouTube video, guys. I fellowship with you guys in the comment section. I read all my comments. So, you know, definitely, guys, having fellowship, you know, iron sharpening iron. And, you know, if, if, if your brother falls short, you're there to, or your sister falls short, you're there to uplift them up. Okay? So, fellowshipping is important. Number nine is stay in your Bible. Uh, stay in your Bible. Okay? And it says, you know, study to show yourself approved. Okay? That's in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. So when you know your word, guys, when you know the word, when you stay in your Bible, you are untouchable because you now know that you can no longer operate in faith. Or sorry, you can no longer operate in fear. My fault. I didn't mean to say that. You can no longer operate in fear because your faith overpowers the fear. Okay. So when you stay in your when you stay in your Bible, I remember, guys, there's a lot of times I would struggle with the spirit of fear. Okay. Now we know, of course, God does not give us the spirit of fear, but there's a lot of times where. I didn't know the Bible, so I wasn't able to fight spiritual warfare. I, I didn't know we had to put the full armor of God on. I didn't know these things. So as I started to grow and mature in my mature in my walk with Christ, I understand that that came with a lot of with a lot of power when I started to show myself approved. Came with a lot of spiritual power, knowing the word of God. Okay, so I can no longer be led astray, deceived, nothing like that, because I know what God's word says. Okay. So it's important to stay in, stay in your Bible. People ask me where should I start at? I would recommend Proverbs for a new beginner. Now that's just me. I would recommend Proverbs. Psalms is a good one. Proverbs is definitely number one. Then Psalms and like you can start from like Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. But whatever you're led to in the spirit. That's just how I started. I started with Proverbs. Okay, number 10. Last but not least, guys. So it says, be led by the spirit of truth and not emotions and feelings. A lot of people, guys, they get caught up in their emotions and feelings. And when it comes to this Bible, when it comes to this walk, it's all about truth. You have to love the truth, okay? You don't want to get caught up in the snare of being overly religious, being overly righteous, okay? Always the spirit of truth, okay? The spirit of truth overpowers your emotions. It overpowers your feelings. If you, whatever you believe in is not backed by the Bible, you are wrong, okay? So, and when you're wrong, you know, you correct yourself. You have the spirit to correct yourself. So it's no longer emotions and feelings, no longer being offended, Okay, so it's all about, you know, loving the truth, being led by the spirit of truth. The Bible says that the world cannot receive the spirit, uh, the spirit of truth, okay, because it sees them not, neither knows them. Okay, so like I said, when you, when you, to receive the spirit of truth, you must leave, you must forsake the things of this world. And that's what God gives you with the spirit of truth. So like I said, no longer deceive, no longer living in fear, none of that. Forsaking this world and gaining the spirit of truth. This is very, very important, guys. All right, so uh, 10 ways, guys, how to stay on fire for God. Number one is be willing to deny yourself daily and keep your eyes fixed on Jesus Christ. Number two is don't live a life of willful sin and repent daily. We all fall short, so it's important to repent. Number three is meditate on God's word and promises every day. Uh, number four is abide in charity, faith, and hope. Number five is take some time to practice fasting and prayer. Number six is be humble and don't think you're better than anyone. Number seven is do the will of God and have faith in works. Number eight is fellowship with brothers and sisters in Christ. Number nine is stay in your Bible so that you show yourself approved. And number 10 is be led by the spirit of truth and on emotions and feelings. I hope you guys learned something in this video. If you haven't already, check out this end screen right here and smash the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you guys wish to support me. 
My links are down below in the description. I love you guys so much. I'm out. Peace.